Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll execute the data click notebook from our Azure Data Factory to transform the population data. Let's switch over to our data factory and get started. Okay, here we are in our data factory. Let's hit to manage and then click on link services and click new. So here we want to create a link service for the Databricks service. So we want to find that under compute rather than data store. And here it is Azure Databricks and click continue. I'm gonna call this one LSDB COVID Compute. Okay. And we can leave it on the default integration runtime. And we want to find the subscription here. So that'll be my pay as you go subscription. And we want to pick the Databricks workspace. In my case, it is COVID reporting Databricks to learn ADF. And we want to create a new job compute rather than using an existing interactive compute because we've deleted that in our case. So that's that one. And one more thing we need to do here is the access token. So we need to get an access token from our Databricks workspace and give it here. Either you can keep that in Key Vault and then use the Key Vault to get the access token. But let's paste it in here directly. To get the access token, you need to head over to the Databricks workspace. And then on the top right, click on Profile icon and select Setting and then go to Developer tab from the left side menu, select Manage button from Users. And then under Access Tokens, click Generate a New Token. You can say this is for demo purposes that's optional and you can keep it for as long as you want, but I'm going to keep it for, say, 30 days and click Generate. That'll give you a token. But one thing to remember is you have to copy this and keep it somewhere safe because you won't be able to see this again. So I'm going to put it into my text pad for now and click OK and then head over to the data factory again. And let's give the access token. So that's gone in there. And based on that, it's gone and got the cluster versions. So which one we can use? So let's head over to that. So let's pick the cluster version from here. Let's go for something latest. So the, let's pick the 13.3 LTS. That's the one we used on the interactive compute. And we want to pick the node type. Let's go for the standard DS3 V2. This is the one we used previously, which is the DS3 underscore V2. And we want to get a latest Python version 3. That's good enough for us. And you've got additional compute settings. This is the unique scripts and all that kind of stuff, but we don't need anything like that. And let's test the connection here. Yeah, it's successful. And then now we can click create and that'll create the link service for us. Okay, that's been created. So the next thing to do is to create the pipeline that'll execute a notebook. So I'm going to create a new pipeline from here and let's call this one as PL Process Population Data. Okay, now we need to pull in an activity to execute the notebook. Under Databricks, you got three different activities that you can execute. You've got the standard Python activity, you got the jar to execute and then the notebook to execute. But in our case, we've created a Python notebook within Databricks. So we want the notebook activity. I'm going to call this one as execute population transformation. Okay. So the options here are pretty standard. So you got the timeout currently set to 12 hours. You would want to change that and retry and then the retry interval. And if you want, whether you want to secure your inputs and outputs, the next thing we want to do is to click on the Azure Databricks. And you want to pick your link service. So that is the LSDB COVID compute. And here in settings, you would want to put your notebook path so you can browse to that because our link service will take you there. So we put ours under COVID trans and it is the transform population data. So let's click OK on that. And you can open the notebook if you wanted to. And that's everything you need to do. We got no parameters and we don't have to append any libraries as well. So if we publish this, so that's been published, either you can do a debug or you can do a manual trigger. So I'll do a manual trigger and then we'll see in the monitor section. So let's do trigger now and there are no parameters to give. So it's running at the moment. So let's head over to the monitor tab and see what's running. Yeah, so we got this trigger running at the moment and let's have a look. So at the moment, it's just provisioning the compute, I hope. So let's open that up. So as you can see, it's saying, waiting for the compute. So it is spinning up a compute for us and then no output available until the task begins. 
So normally it takes about 3 to 4 minutes to spin up a job compute and then it'll execute the notebook for us. So let's wait for a few minutes. Okay, so the pipeline's now succeeded. So let's have a look. It took 4 minutes and 28 seconds. And if you click on the classes there it'll give you the URL to look at the output. So that takes you to Databricks. So as you can see the everything succeeded and the status is succeeded and it's given you the execution output. So this command took 0.18 seconds and things like that. So you can see individually each command's execution time. So everything succeeded and it all looks okay. So let's head over to the storage account and see the output for ourselves. So the output was going to be written under the process container and we were expecting a population folder in here. So let's do a refresh. And we got a population folder and we got the files here. As you can see, it's got this weird naming here. That's because Spark uses distributed computing. So it's at one partition here. So that's why you've got this one file. Otherwise you would end up having more than one. So I'm going to download this file and we can have a quick look. So download that into here and I'm going to open that in spreadsheet. Okay, here's the file. So let's have a look. We got one record for each of the countries. So if you look at UK, that's the one we looked previously. So we got 47 records for the 47 or 46 records for the 46 countries. And we got the two digit country code, three digit country code, the population, and then you've got each of the percentages per age group. So the age group columns are also clearly written here. That is brilliant. So it looks really good. But before we finish, I want to head over to the Databricks workspace and show you the job compute created as part of this execution. So let's do that. And if I click on computes, as we know we had one interactive compute, which we deleted. We used it for our set of activities. So there is no computes listed here, but under job computes, you can see one. So this is the one we just spun from our data factory pipeline and that was created and also terminated. So this is a compute you can't restart it won't let you do that. And this is the runtime that we requested. And the driver node and the work node are specified actually. So that's the DS3 V2. So if you click on that one, you can see the configuration. So you got the worker type as DS3 V2 and the driver is the DS3 V2. So in this case, actually it would have costed as 1.5 Databricks units for an hour. But because the compute was spun up and destroyed within 4 minutes or 4 and a half minutes, it would have costed us literally nothing. And in this case, actually the compute mode is also standard. So as I said before, you can't restart this compute. You don't have the option. So you're not seeing anything. All you can do is go to the job run. So that's all it is. It gives you the outputs. So I hope this lesson's given you an idea of how to invoke Databricks activity from your data factory pipelines. So that's the end of this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.